Welcome to Inside the Set with Set Decor. Inside the Set is a series that focuses on the design and decor of stories that excite us and ignite our imaginations when we get to discuss the collaborations between production designers and set decorators and get to hear firsthand accounts of how these works of art came to be. From their inception, ideas on a page, to completion where we get to sit in the dark and experience them collectively. Hello and welcome to Inside the Set with Set Decor. I'm Elizabeth Keenan, SDSA. Joining me today for this interview is the magnanimous production designer, David Crank, who's had an outstanding career of his own. Hi, I'm David Crank, ADG. Joining us today are set decorator Letizia Santucci, SDSA, and production designer Arthur Max to discuss their collaboration on the film, House of Gucci. Thank you so much for joining us today, Letizia from Italy and Arthur. And Arthur, you're not a location for kit bag, right? You're at home for a few weeks for the break? Yes, I am. I'm in Los Angeles now. Excellent. Very nice. Leticia, could you tell us about your background and how you became a set decorator and came to work with Arthur Max on this fabulous film? I've been uh, graduated at the Fine Art Academy of Rome and uh, I've started working in the film Eastern Street like uh, more than 20 years ago and uh, always uh, cooperating with the international project arriving in Italy. And um, I had the chance to meet uh, many director and uh, produ production designer. And among these, there was uh, the Arthur that we, I met in, an, in a previous movie with Ridley Scott, that was uh, the old man in the world. And uh, that happened that uh, we keep on cooperating even in this project. So you had quite a bit of experience with Ridley Scott and we know Arthur Max, you have as well. So Arthur, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I got involved in um, theater design in university at NYU from that. I was doing a lot of stage lighting and um, photography was also another interest of mine. I worked for um, several fashion uh, photographers in New York while I was at university as well. So film and, and stage lighting uh, were my interests and that's how I eventually uh, came to where I am. Oh, I want to segue into working with Darius Wolski, who um, you've worked quite a bit with. Can you talk to me about your collaboration and the lighting uh, conversations that you all have together? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, with the Darius, we are always choosing the shears and the fabric and the blind because you really like to have the control of the light especially from the windows or even when there isn't a windows to create a kind of filter for the lights. And um, even uh, like to play more a lot with the fixer light. So we like to choose together with us the, the lights that we will have on the set. So this is a, a choice that we do together, the temperature of the color and the, the kind of light we bring. It's uh, a work that we do together. Uh, it's very collaborative, Darius, and, uh, you know, um, uh, we integrate a lot of what we do uh, based on his input about the ways he wants to light a particular set, whether it's going to be high key or low key lighting. And uh, as Letizia was saying, you know, the densities of fabrics are very critical to him and um, also the orientation of windows and openings and where, you know, he can get his lights in. Well, it's, you know, he's kind of an honorary member of the art department, really. Yeah. Even this time, uh, we had uh, a collaboration with Darius about uh, the vintage TV. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, this time we have the three time that we have uh, the TV that needs to, be, to work on the set. And uh, the previous movie, when we worked in, uh, all the money we worked with the real vintage tv on the screen but uh, didn't work perfectly well because uh, sometimes the vintage tv got broken uh, without any reason because just because they are old and even the signal is not perfect for various so this time he said no i mean we have to make uh, in another way we have to make a kind of a fake vintage tv but with inside the lcd screen 
So basically, we bought the shell of the actual TV and uh, we put inside the LCD, LCD screen that was bigger. So we could create a portion of the TV missing. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, it worked perfectly. We were super happy. He said, oh, what a beautiful, perfect <laughs> vintage TV you did that worked match totally great with the camera. But I mean, it was a, it was a big job. <laughs> it was not just nothing. <laughs> this is your like 15th movie with, with uh, Ridley Scott? Something like that. Well, the first thing I did with him was a commercial um, back in the 80s. And uh, in London, and uh, very precise instruction and brief, and very little time to prep, and nothing's changed. <laughs> he does have this ability of seeming like the entire time he's working, he's got the whole thing in his head down right from the detail to the big thing, and it's always there, kind of going back and forth. And it's it's rather amazing. I mean, that he he's, he's can be that clear and that focused on kind of anything you ask him. Well, he storyboards. Um, that's his secret weapon. In that he draws every frame um, of, of anything he's doing, any sequence, and um, it's really a blueprint for what we're doing. The drawing and the the that he send us with the, everything you want to have on a set are really helpful. And um, it's very creative even at the last minute, uh, asking what he would like to have. <laughs> so sometimes we are able <laughs> to figure out in advance what he like, but quite often when he arrive in the morning on the set, and then he keep on asking something that we never talked about before. So, I mean, that's the Ridley word, but anyhow. We knew that with Arthur that he likes the things that uh, are reflective, that he likes the, 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 the when the sets are clean, where there are not a lot of charging, and the furniture need to have a shape that is contemporary, elegant, modern, and um, leave the space to, to the actor. Yes, I think uh, what he doesn't like is, is a kind of a, a museum quality to a set with a lot of things that do, are correct from the period in which we're trying to recreate, um, but very often don't have any impact. Large shapes and silhouettes, good silhouettes um, are important and constant throughout any genre that he does. Uh, the shape language of, of things are essential. Um, that read on camera, uh, you might have, you know, a kind of um, popcorn machine from the 1970s, um, but who cares? Uh, in the end, it's, it's not going to really, you know, make a statement visually. And, and that's what I think uh, we try to achieve in, in this film. He's in constant control of every aspect. I mean, uh, every department he's in and out of. I'm sure he came to see you, Letizia, uh, about uh, colors and samples of fabrics as well as yeah. Darius furniture. He loves modern movement furniture, particularly lamps. Let's give him an arc of lamp and he's a happy camper. <laughs> When I worked with him, the first day D said he had a, he was the kind of person he would walk into his living room and sit down and he'd look at it and he'd get up and he'd arrange it so it looked nice from where he was sitting. And the next day he'd sit on the other side of the room and he'd rearrange the other side of the room so it looked nice. <laughs> and here's a technical question. Was there a problem with um, having these fixtures cleared? with Magistretti or Castiglione or, you know, Floss or any of these houses uh, that manufacture these, this classic Italian lighting. Did uh, Letizia, did you have uh, to deal with any of that or was it fine because it was Gucci and... No, we didn't have the issue with them. And even, I mean, it's a mass produced lamp. It's not a unique piece of lamp. So we don't have to ask uh, special permission for use a lamp as a lamp. 
But uh, in any case, for this movie, we really have been supported by the Italian producer of furniture. We had more of a problem with the artwork. I was going to ask you about that as well. And via Necky, uh, the pieces of art there. Um, how was how did you proceed with those issues? Well, I think the Villa Necky, uh, they owned all the artwork that we 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 used. We brought some of our own in, but there was a clearance uh, department involved, which inevitably took a long time. I think the biggest set was the the New York apartment, the penthouse. Mm -hmm. Right, Letizia? The pop art. Yeah, the uh, pop set. art. Because a lot of the uh, art was created by artists still living. Yeah, it is. Yes, I think it went right up to the day of shoot, in fact. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. The suspense. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's a, a kind of a, a light fixture, a relief uh, on the wall. I just wanted to point out that that was uh, instigated and designed by Letizia from scratch. That's not one of the rental pieces that we used. It's beautiful. And a, a lot of the furniture um, we used was from uh, the occupants. Uh, I'd say about half of it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. The low profile of that furniture also works with the artwork. Obviously the proportion is right. And their characters yeah. were looming. And Leticia, that amazing relief light fixture is is really front and center. It's gorgeous. It's really beautiful. See, since it was, uh, it would look like it was similar to another uh, famous fixture light. We were uh, sending the drawing to the clearance for approval, and uh, every time they say that it looked too much similar from the one we were thinking. So, I mean, we changed this drawing like 10 times before arriving something that was suitable for us and for the clearance as well. Because every time this lamp looked like something already existed, but I mean, nowadays it's too difficult to find some, to draw something that nobody had drawn before. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really was a long story, but with the, at one point we, we, with the, my director, we said, okay, we give up with this lamp, it's what we have to do. Say, no, no, I want to make this lamp. Okay, I keep on drawing this lamp <laughs> since we find an agreement <laughs> with the clearance department and we can have these things done. And it was done uh, like the day before of the shooting because uh -huh. it took like uh, three, three weeks just for being approved from the clearance department. And then we have to, to make it. And we were very lucky because this apartment looks exactly like, being a New Yorker, I can verify the authenticity of this apartment looking like a, 1970s Upper East Side um, high-rise apartment building, very difficult to find right. in Italy. That was the yeah. biggest challenge I think we had for a couple of See. sets, finding New York in Italy at all. Was there much documentation of what their houses were at that time, or is that where you got to take a flight of fancy for yourself? Well, I, I saw some interiors um, mm -hmm. of the, Maurizio and Patrizia uh, residents, uh, they were photographed often and, and it was awful. I mean, it was beyond <laughs> <kitsch>. <laughs> right, right. expensive, but really kind of over the top, um, flashing colors, lots of bold patterns. We wanted to give them an upgrade in, in terms of space. <laughs> Just because their name was Gucci, I mean. When we start talking about these things, Arthur said to me, I want to make, uh, Ridley and I want to make a movie when we have the icon of the design, the beautiness of what has been done in Italy in the 15, the 70. So we have to create um, some sets that are not outdated, but uh, preserve the, the contemporary of the style. So that's what we try to do. We try to look for reference of the decoration that are from exactly for the period, but not out of date for the, for the contemporary taste. Do you develop any kind of a palette that's, or is it really something you kind of know where you want to go and it works as you go? I mean, for my part, um, the difficulty 
in planning ahead was COVID. A lot of locations were not available because we were trying to recreate a world of opulence and elegance and wealth. And people who were opulent, elegant, and wealthy didn't want <laughs> to know about us. <laughs> in, particularly in the, in the height of the COVID outbreak, right. which, was, yeah. which was, you know, rampant in Italy. Um, and so we couldn't get into a lot of places mm -hmm. and we didn't know where we'd end up. Uh, in advance, uh, that far in advance. A lot of places were very last minute. And I, we just kind of went with it, you know. Um, the places we could control, which was like the Villa Necchi, where we were welcomed with open arms. Um, not a lot of time to do the dressing physically, but a lot of time to discuss it all. <laughs> Uh, although it was a classic of 1930s Milanese modern design by a wonderful and very little known architect, Piero Petro Lupi, uh, who, you know, designed not only the, the, the building itself, but some of the furniture as well. But occupants in, historically who came after the initial design changed the decor over time and made it more, quote unquote, comfy. And so Leticia got it all back. We, we got permission to take a lot of things out, a lot of drapery down, and bring, we tried to bring it back, didn't we, Leticia, to where it should have been. And Villanecki in terms of color was, I mean, uh, quite easy because Villanecki was a wooden uh, panel on the wall. So, we, and shiny wooden panel on the wall. So we decided to go back to the rationalist, to the uh, modernist style. And uh, we select all the furniture with the, the wooden polish surface clean. So that's everything we bring in with some white for uh, keep it light and, uh, and Ridley, we knew that he loves the rationalism. <laughs> we knew from the past that he's really one of his favorite uh, style and design uh, that worked very well. I thought all of it, what you did was, was nice because it was, it was light and it didn't get ponderous feeling. And, I, and, and it pushes through. And so, I mean, his things are quite operatic, but you never lost sight of who we were talking about and, and kind of the point of the story, which wasn't, you know, it was, it was these people and these tragic lives they created for themselves. Yes, and it also allowed the robust performances um, space to move, yeah. um, which so often isn't the case when the characters are kind of fighting with it, with the surroundings, which, you know, with this kind of material, one would tend to want to go over the top, but. Um, to subdue that and um, just quietly step back, but still have such a, an amazing visual uh, presence is is a fine line, and, and you did it just you know beautifully. Yeah. Could you discuss um, the speed with which Ridley works? Mm -hmm. um, I know you shot this so quickly, and I, you were all over the place. I'm just looking at the all the locations that you were at, all the little towns and. Um, how did you work with that? I know you've done it before, Arthur, but also Leticia, how, how did that impact your work, the speed with which, um, and that includes prep, how much prep did you have also? I mean, with uh, my assistant, we said, okay, now we are fine. We are getting great with the three day of prep including um, research, finding the furniture, the liver on the set and setting up. That's our standard, three days. <laughs> three days so, to get in and dress? Three days, because I mean, uh, as Arthur was explaining, many location has been confirmed at the very end. And uh, basically we have one set or two set every day. But that's was the, the, the story of the movie. Yes, even, I mean, everything was ready at the very, very end, I have to say. I mean, I don't have basically any picture, even after I don't have any picture that said dressed because the set was dressed the two hours before of the shooting. Yeah. So yeah. what's the time to make a picture? Never. And you finished faster than you were supposed to, too. Then you cut like a week off or something? Yeah, we were a week ahead of schedule. Wow, that sounds like him. Which is, that's, you know, the essence of Ridley. He doesn't hang around. 
He shoots with multiple cameras for at least for any dialogue scene with right. principles. So, uh, you know, you're seeing, which is great because you see a lot of the sets. Nothing is, is left out. Right. He really makes the most of what you give him. Yeah. And it's always yeah. all there on the, on the screen. Wow. Yeah, Except for the sequences that he cuts completely out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did pretty well on this one. Uh, we lost Studio 54 in the final cut, didn't we? It's in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, it's in the trailer. At least it's in the trailer. <laughs> Leticia, what was the name of that palazzo in Rome that we use? I can never remember the name of it. Villa Polizena. 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 Right. Which was a royal villa. And she, she was very welcoming and um, had a partner who was an artist and they had exquisite taste in both neoclassical and modern styles. I love that place. And that was the apartment that they occupied. It was supposed to be a penthouse, but in the end it became a villa because we love this place so much. And we couldn't find another penthouse. <laughs> the truth was suitable. Believe me, we tried. Do you remember? We went in and out of about a half a dozen places, but none of them really worked as well as this place. And uh, we shot inside, we shot outside. The gardens were amazing. There was something like uh, two acres in the middle of Rome wow. uh, of a walled garden. It was fabulous. How do you two work together to arrive at a set, to arrive from, let's say, uh, the New York apartment? Um, Letizia, um, do you use Dropbox? I mean, these are very technical questions, but set decorators are interested in this. What are your methods for working together? I mean, we have a Dropbox for set dressing, and uh, I like to have a Dropbox organized with the folder with every member of my crew. So everyone uploaded the new things that they found in their own folder. So I can daily check if I need something that has been done by a shopper or whoever. And uh, then we have a, a supplier folder where I have all the photos from every each supplier we went through, the shopper went through, we get the pictures and everything. And then I, I make a choice for set. Um, moving the picture from every suppliers to the single set. So the storeman and the lead man, they can know in advance which pieces I've selected for every set and from where supplier they are from. So they could organize the loading, the, the dimension of the truck or how many people they will need for uh, download or redress. So they have an idea in advance. And even when um, the, the furniture arrived on the set, they knew already this, the storm and how to divide the set because they have access to this Dropbox. So, so it takes a little bit of time, but it's very helpful. I, I, really, I really like to work on Dropbox. The only problem with Dropbox is that sometimes if there is not a connection, it doesn't work. <laughs> when it becomes too big, then you start uploading, uploading at one point. I mean, it's too, too difficult to open from the phone. That's the right. problem. Yes. So with yeah. Astor, sometimes, I mean, we were around, I said, I have everything on my Dropbox. I cannot show you anything because my phone doesn't open the Dropbox now. So you, you can remember. You can remember. <laughs> I remember those meetings. <laughs> yeah. What was your relationship with Gucci? Were they helpful or just kind of put up with you or what? How did they? Letizia, why don't you take that one? <laughs> You're Italian. <laughs> you want to get in trouble. One of the highest moments of the movie was the night before when we dressed the, the real store of Gucci in, in uh, Via Condotti in Rome. That was the best time we have ever had because we were allowed to go in the shop and uh, we could touch all the, the bags and uh, even try <laughs> and move uh, and the shoes and everything. <laughs> it was a great time. We really had a great time. <laughs> Yes, because you should explain that our prop department, lovely Federico Chomo, our prop master, was busily yes. making a lot of Gucci products for the movie. Um, wow. Because initially, well, the Gucci Corporation hadn't decided whether they were going to help us or not. Yeah. 
I mean, the merchandising of the Gucci was one of the issues that we faced since the early days of the prep. I mean, there was an assistant of mine and uh, that was devoted only to the merchandising of the Gucci. So it started from the beginning, uh, looking for the right model for the period because we have the uh, store in Milan and the store in New York. So there are two different time lapse. So we have to have two different collection of bag and shoes. And uh, he start collecting all the right model, and then we we start to reproduce some of this model uh, for have uh, the stuff for fit for fill the shop. Because as Arthur said at the beginning, we didn't knew that uh, the Gucci, the real Gucci, will have supplied us something or not. So we were ready to do by our ourselves everything. And we get in touch with all the vintage collector that there was in Italy. That luckily there are a lot. So right. we rented everything was rentable, real, and we reproduced that everything wasn't re uh, rentable. And then at the very end, I arrived at the Gucci and said, "Oh, can we help you with something?" I say, "Why? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Give us something." Yeah, it was like <laughs> the day before and, we shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh. they opened finally the door. <laughs> The exterior we're looking at of the what would be in the movie, the uh, New York flagship store on Fifth Avenue and 55th Street, uh, Midtown Manhattan. And we found ourselves, you can see in the picture, the background apartment building. We're in a suburban area of Rome, and it was the only place we thought could work because it had a certain uh, basic, it had the bones of a big store and it had three levels inside. And uh, so what you're seeing now is what we did to the exterior facade to make it more uh, midtown Manhattan. Uh, and the blue screen, um, eventually we put in New York City streets with period cars and um, period buildings because there was no way we were gonna find uh, that particular piece of Manhattan anywhere in, in Rome. Um, we tried, but either the shops were too small or they were too busy and uh, not really interested in upsetting, you know, their, their ongoing businesses. And, you know, it was a, a very challenging project uh, in terms of having uh, found this discount, basically a discount store having its end of year sale and it was jammed with clothing. And um, we emptied it out basically. And we were lucky to get permission to do that. And we brought in a lot of um, our own shelving, illuminated counters, uh, polstered uh, seating. We even built a dressing room or two to shoot a se sequence in. And uh, we had to revamp it several times for three different stores. There was the Gucci store itself, and then there were two other scenes that took place in um, other stores. And so we revamped the, the Gucci store into a, another store, which was kind of a generic uh, high-end ladies' uh, clothing store. And then we had a perfumery scene as well where in the courtship of Patrizia and Maurizio we revamped another area of the same place. And then we built walls of light, you know, just complete walls that were light boxes. And that worked very well. We just moved them around to camera and uh, changed the dressing. And Letizia had a lot of selections, all pre-planned and ready to just pop in because really was dressing to camera basically. Yeah. on these revamps. Yeah. There was no overnight, you know, revamps. It was, how long is this going to take, Arthur? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were you there on set every day just helping to run this, uh, you know, make sure that the look was appropriate for what you wanted? Yes, I was every day on set to opening the set, but uh, after I have to go to prep the set for the following day. And uh, as soon as I leave the set, of course, something happened. So <laughs> luckily Arthur was there always basically. <laughs> but as soon as we said, okay, it's done for today. I mean, we are done. We can leave. Immediately something changed. 
<laughs> it was a process. I mean, it, it, we got we got it, you know, used to the process. And the, the travel also, you know, we started in the mountains, Valdosta, where we shot the San Moritz sections. This is in the Italian Alps. And most of those chalets of any scale, of any degree of uh, opulence, were closed. And, and the owners, you know, in the time of COVID, uh, in, in the early outbreak, when we were scouting all these places, they couldn't be bothered to open them up. We had to wait for months to get the one we got. And in the end, the interior was very disappointing. The rooms were quite small and dreary and heavy and dark because it was a 19th century chalet. It was more of a, a villa than a chalet. And uh, so we decided to build the interior all on set, which we hadn't really planned for. And it, you know, suddenly we're we're designing and dressing a, a whole house, and so it was a kind of knock-on effect of delays, and the snow was melting literally um, as we were there, so we had to do a lot of artificial snow, and when we did the scout, we had a snowfall, and <laughs> it was a, a meter deep, and it looked like a Christmas card. When we got back to shoot. You know, there was like nothing left. <laughs> so we, we put down as much artificial snow as we could. Fortunately, on distant mountains, there was still snow because they were at a higher altitude. Sure. And then, you know, CG embellishments. So it was all of that. And it was wonderful. I mean, it, it yeah. really looked great. Yeah, it did. And, um, and then... Um, you know, we, we kind of agonized over the decor and um, for that, we didn't want it to be like typical. Um, if, again, if you look, look at the reference of chalets of the period, they're very kind of overdressed and cluttered and heavy. And we didn't want that. We, we wanted it to be open and much more architectural digest meets house beautiful model. I wanted to talk about uh, Aldo's uh, and Paolo's house, uh, Paolo's um, atelier, if you will. And then when Aldo comes back from jail, um, it's a very interesting little uh, modest nook. It was an actual atelier of five different textile designers who all lived and worked together in a commune in, right in the middle of uh, one of the oldest parts of Rome. And we didn't do a lot. Basically, it was a process of removing things and bringing in a few pieces. See, we removed the, the, the things and we rearranged the, the, the furniture in a way that uh, was uh, suitable for the camera because uh, it was very crowded. But uh, the taste of the place was this. And we bring in all the sewing machine, all the steaming machine, everything, all the, the model, everything we need for, uh, for the action. But uh, the soul of the place was the original one. Everything in, in Rome is either 15th, 16th or 17th century. But these people got together and bought this property and tore down uh, the original uh, building and built this custom built uh, studio, which was all interconnected. That was what was so great about it. All of the uh, shelving was full of textiles or spools of thread. We built custom built pigeon loft and we, we built it on wheels so we could move it around so it could always get into shop. Nice. <laughs> Paolo Gucci was the president of the pigeon fanciers of Italy <laughs> association, apparently. It was one of his quirky hobbies. We even have uh, the, the sewing machine on wheel because uh, always for the COVID, the many sets, sometimes we have to be ready to bring the scene out. For instance, at one point we said, okay, why don't we have even some sewing machine outside the garden because of the COVID maybe outside it's more um, safe. So we even have this option of the sewing machine to bring all the set out. But uh, at the end, no, maybe for this set it didn't, but... Uh, we have to be ready every time to bring the things outside. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> How big a crew did you have, Leticia? What was your, your core crew? Huge. How many people did you have? Assistance? Huge, I have to say. Huge, because I have uh, one uh, lead assistant, Luisa, that uh, we worked together very well since uh, not, like many years. And then I have uh, three main uh, uh, assistants with uh, their own assistant and an art director with an assistant art director and the coordinator and uh, then there is all the lead men and uh, the guys that I think we were uh, 50 person more or less mm -hmm. but because we had to dress redress revamp I mean it was uh, right right every day was a two or three sets every day so you need crew yes we had a fantastic crew I mean they were really devoted and hard working and nothing was too much for them and Arthur, I want to just commend you on the picture cars. Um, I love driving and um, I just adored the automo automobiles. I, I just, they were an eye candy and, you know, I would of course love to drive them. You and me both. Yeah, well, I've been fascinated by cars, you know, from childhood. And it, it, I really was a rabbit in the carrot patch. Uh, and Ridley was very specific, you know, because um, he'd worked there before and he knew, he knew that there were a lot of old cars around to be had. So, you know, we were very fussy about the cars. Yes, I, you would have to be. So <laughs> such specificity with these characters. Yeah, and also Italy, you know, in our period was, it was, you know, leading the world, both not only in, in elegant and opulent cars, but also in, um, you know, the kind of man in the street, family, uh, economy cars. It was fun. It was a fun part of the project. Yes, yeah. I can imagine. I wanted to um, thank you all for your time. Many thanks to the Set Decorator Society of America, along with MGM and United Artists Releasing, who brought us House of Gucci. Inside the set with Set Decor, would like to thank both of you, Arthur Max and Leticia Santucci, SDSA, for discussing your phenomenal craftsmanship and collaboration on the fantastic film, House of Gucci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Inside the Set with Set Decor. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, setdecor.com.